Hi, welcome back to the French Pyrenees. I'm Julie and this is Ian and we are building our off-grid home starting with the garage workshop and then moving our tiny homestead to our new one acre plot here in a nearby village. When it comes to the exciting tasks such as framing and siding which I know everybody is waiting for. There are always 10 other mini tasks that get in the way like the last video it's all in the planning or the lack of planning. It seems that we've dug ourselves into a corner and before we can start the siding project, we have to dig ourselves out of it, quite literally. Lots of mini digger action as we grade the land around the retaining walls and flatten out all the earth piles that we seem to have created over the past six months. We're also doubling up on the French drainage system we put in, just to make sure we stay dry as um, this building is on a sloping site. Oh. Lots to do, so let's get start digging and finish our coffee. Hi, we're Ian and Julie. Follow us on our tiny homestead and our debt-free project of a lifetime, the building of our shipping container home here in the Pyrenees, and all of this alongside our full-time jobs. Uh, this is a sleeve we've got, like a big uh, surgical sleeve that you put after uh, bandages. Right, take this cellar tape off, let's see if it works. We just thought this would be the easiest thing for this top pipe, because uh, there's not going to be a lot of gravel around it. It's going to be more ornamental gravel actually, because it's going to be seen, because it's going to be right up against the wall. Yeah. So we're going to slide this on now. Let's have a go. Oh dear. Uh, it's catching on these things. Right, another idea. I'm going to try this. Trimmed off the handle, which was a sharp piece. I'm hoping oh, it might be a bit too big. This one, oh no! Oh, look at that! Lava. Big challenge for the little mini digger. Let's see if we can get that rock. Oh, it's freezing cold completely white with frost everywhere and I'm just I just want to get back in my polytunnel but 
it's been like this for the past few weeks now. We're off to the wood yard to get the uh, framing wood. We're getting to that stage. We're back in a very cold, frosty wood yard. Though all the woods covered in frost. Bit of a late to turn up to site this morning. Um, you saw we went really early to the wood yard and uh, we got all our uh, framing timber. Um, I've actually put little spaces underneath because it is quite damp. It was pretty frosty this morning as well, but it, it's only freshly cut. It's not dried timber. So this is gonna frame up in between the metal struts, um, basically for all the siding and everything else to be put onto. And uh, yesterday afternoon, we got the garage door so that is all there. I'm hoping it's all safe. Um, it should be. We're pretty good here. Right, today we are still getting on with that drain. We did a lot of um, landscaping, if you want to call it that, with the mini digger yesterday. Um, it was, well, it was planned, but it wasn't. Uh, we were just overwhelmed with the amount of soil we've got and we didn't know where to start. So it was easy just to uh, flatten off all those lumps, get it all into... Uh, where we think it's going to be position wise and now we can carry on with the drainage and any more removal of the earth behind this building we can scatter and build that up over there so uh, right i better go and find my drills and uh, we're going to put up these weather strips on the uh, plastic membrane and then uh, finalize the french drain and get a lot of pea gravel down and get back on the digger and fill it all in these are the plastic strips that we put on all the way down the back. And um, I was nailing them in with little nails, concrete nails, and they're not very good at all. And Julie's just putting this Sikaflex rubber uh, squidge this waterproof and on the back before we put it up to give a little bit of extra protection and this is just stopping the water running down the wall but um, going back to here if you can see we'll actually have um, crepe or what's it called um, a render which will just cover this so we'll have a, a concrete render down here and then that will cover that strip anyway. So all water will be going downwards. But it's a lot, lot easier with these screws than uh, the nails. Just putting in this wide piece um, to attach to the existing French drain, which is under all of this gravel and, and uh, refill, because the, the new, the surface drain I'm putting in is gonna connect into here, hopefully, and then they'll both come out of here so as just as one and that'll be a hard pipe then a hard um pvc pipe i'm not sure and then we can extend that all the way to where the drop off is I think it's time to get the other pipe and insert it on the top and then uh, Julie can get hold of the mini dumper and get some uh, pea gravel. using these staples because this pipe is so unruly <laughs> so hard to keep in place but I'm putting up right up against the plastic membrane right I'll put the screw 
squidge in this again. Yeah. Right. That looks good. It's a good drop. Hi, for those of you who've been following our build for a while, you'll know that we are totally off-grid. No electricity, no water to site. So, we use an IBC container to haul our water, and uh, we use the EcoFlow Delta II for all the electricity needs. Well, I think it's been going for about an hour now, pumping away. Um, the EcoFlow is working perfectly. We would like to thank EcoFlow for recognising our need, and they have sent us their brand new Delta II power station. The EcoFlow Delta II is not just a battery. It has powered our complete build of the garage workshop. It is an 1800 watt output that basically powers all our tools from my table saw through to my hammer drill. It has built our retaining wall and foundations. It's run the cement mixer all day for over 20 full mixes, along with the water pump when we need to spray out and clean up afterwards. It charges to 80% in just 50 minutes, so it allows us to drop back to our current property here where the workshop is, and uh, get, the, get the Delta II on charge and back up to full power for the afternoon's work when we go back to site. This was perfect for when we were running the cement mixer and water pump throughout the day for the building of our block walls. The Delta II got us through the most stressful part of our build yet, which was concrete day. It ran our vi concrete vibrator, um, the water, and it went right into the night with our floodlights as well. That was a long, long night battery change out on our battery coffee station. The LifePo 4 battery will give 3,000 charge cycles, 0 to 100%, meaning this will last for over 10 years or more, which is longer than we'll be about, I bet. Its built-in battery management system keeps the battery safe and secure, so no worrying if you have to leave it in remote locations like we do in our garage workshop. We'll be using the Delta II power station to power the whole garage workshop, and we'll be adding a 300 watt 48 volt solar panel to allow the unit to trickle charge throughout the day. Um, and that's why I've built up this extended cable so I can plug this straight into the back of the EcoFlow and then run it right to our solar panel. We intend to use it to power all the lights in the garage, the 240 outlets, the alarm, basically everything in this temporary setup until we get a full blown solar system put into there. As you know, we need the garage workshop before we build the house. So the Eco2 will power everything for that. And with the smartphone app, we can monitor and control the Delta 2. So I'm just going to add the Delta 2 to the EcoFlow app. And you download that from um, App Store or Google Play, etc. So turn on the machine. There we go. Open up the EcoFlow app. It then asks to add device, add device, it's found it straight away, Delta 2, click on Delta 2, and that'll add it. I'm just going to use it without the internet because up at the, uh, the garage workshop, we don't have Wi-Fi at the moment. So I'm just going to skip that, but there we are. It's found it, available time, 98, 50, yep, 99 hours, 99 hours, 92%, 92%, that's the one. So that's how easy it is for the app. And now it's in my system. Soon we'll be getting back to our day job um, where we're sitting in two support vehicles supporting a lot of cyclists across the Pyrenees, the Alps and Corsica. The EcoFlow 2 can be charged on the go via the 12 volt power socket in the car. And this is gonna be a great addition to our support vehicles, providing power to the espresso coffee machine for all those caffeine hungry athletes. And now electric bikes are becoming a lot more common on these tours. We'll be able to give them a quick boost to get their batteries to get them over the next climb. On the front of the uh, Delta II, the on button, of course, brings up the screen. You've got the hours, the percentage, the um, input and the output watts. On the front, you've got four USBs, standard uh, USBs, two USB-As and two fast charge USBs. On the Bottom here are two USB-Cs. To turn on the DC, you always just turn on the local panel has its own switch. On the rear, 
you've got your AC outputs. To turn those sockets on, the little switch is there. Here you've got the 12 volts, so you've got your, uh, you've got your standard 12 volt socket that'll just plug into that. And you've got some smaller um, jack type 12 volts here. Again, a little switch there. The top here is your charging. So you've got your AC, your 240 volt here in France, in, in the EU, 240 volt in. You've got your um, solar input or your 12 volt input just there. And there's a little reset button there, which I've never actually pressed. And on the side are for the accessories. So there's a bunch of accessories now for EcoFlow. So you've got um, smart generators, you've got extra batteries. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, that is what I'm thinking about for the house is to actually power the whole house permanently from the EcoFlow system. Um, they do a small home, tiny home type setup, which would be perfect for us. But that's that plug there. And finally, just to uh, show you the charging, it comes with the AC cable. Turn him round, and this is what I do each day, so it's ready for the next build day. Luckily, we got solar here. So basically, free electricity, straight from our solar, straight into the EcoFlow Delta II. Plug him in, comes on automatically. It's near enough charged already, but now it's charging. It'll just click in. Input 35, 38, and that builds. Um, and it takes, as I said, 50 minutes to get it from zero to 80%, a little bit longer to get to the 100%, and all done. So again, thank you to EcoFlow for sending us the Delta II power station. There is a link in the description, and uh, please click on that, and you'll go straight to this unit. And, well, it's time now to get back to the build, of course, powered by EcoFlow. He's a back saver. Honestly, pushing rocks up and down these slopes kills us. But now we've got this. Oh, it was a dream yesterday. I know I've, I struggled a little bit to get the hang of it and I got told off a few times. But uh, yeah, he's brilliant. I love it. We're using the uh, this smaller, it's supposed to be washed gravel, but it doesn't exactly look clean to me. But um, we're using this instead of the other gray sort of um, road gravel, uh, basically because most of it's going to be on show. So this will be uh, right up against the wall. And, um, you know, it just it's nice to see a bit uh, of pebbles instead of big clumpy concrete rocks. So that's what it looks like. Yeah, it's, just... it's just round. So sort of, it's supposed to be washed, as they say. But uh, yeah, that's why we're using that instead of the other. Good tip, but I just want to be very cautious with this first first lot. We do have to back fill. This is the wall at the back of the garage. So we've got all that French drainage in now. The gravel on top. My little dumper truck, that's my new friend. I love this dumper. Little blue the digger. Around the corner at the top here. This is what we were doing yesterday. There's Ian. Oh yeah. He's in the walls, he's got a gammy knee from bending down and banging it on stones. He crushed a finger, so his little list is growing. But yeah, where Ian is now, he's just putting all the caps over the protective water system. Is it going okay? Yeah, two, three more and then we'll um, lay the, the drain. 
which is very unwielding. I tried to do it on my own this morning. Oh, it's impossible. It just springs everywhere. The last job of the day. I'm holding down the yellow drainage pipe. I'm just putting some pressure on so it doesn't spring back up. And now I'm going to leave her here. Yeah, you will leave me here. But no, we've done all right today, I think. Yeah. We've just put the, uh, the yellow pipe in. Well, it's white now because we put that sleeve on. But the little mini digger has just proved wow. its worth. It's been fantastic today. We've taken out all of this horrible bank that and the mini dumper in conjunction is is fantastic. Yeah, I've been the dream team today. Yeah. Me with the dumper, Ian on his digger. So we have now landscaped or levelled all of this area that was uh, that needed backfilling behind the wall. You can see pictures before of it. It was disgusting and horrible. It was not, hard to visualise. Not, not Julie, the back of the wall. <laughs> but now look at the space we've got. It's yeah. fantastic. We, this was what we thought we had in our head, but it's taken so long to get here. You know, it took a long time to actually buy the land before we could even do anything. Uh, to see this tonight, it's just, well, yeah. Celebratory cup of tea tonight, righty. But first, we've just got to glue that yeah. end into that, put a yeah. bucket of gravel to hold it down, and then, yeah, we'll call it a night. It is quite chilly now the sun has gone behind the mountains so we will see you in the morning Just putting down the gravel over the uh, the French drain. Um, we're just getting all this square. It might look like we're, we are doing landscaping instead of building the garage, but until I get this section done, I can't put on the uh, the siding on this here. Um, it's a metal clad siding. So uh, that will overlap the bottom strip at the bottom. So it's very close to the ground. And um, that is also going to brace this building. So Chicken and egg, Julie went to the, uh, the quarry to get just a handful of stones just to finish off the drainage at the back. The guy dumped the whole lot in. So now we've got a trailer full of stones. We don't want to waste them. So I thought I need to bury my water and my electrical conduit. So let's dig a quick trench across here to where I'm going to finish it up over there before it goes into the house. Full of rocks. Oh, <laughs> the whole thing is just rocks after rocks. And then I had to, uh, my first trench, my first mini trench like this, I was straddled over it. I had to then remember how to get off the trench. So um, yeah, that, that was uh, quite an ordeal. Yeah, you got him. It's not gonna go, but I've got it secure this end. I need to get the... Uh, the tape stuff that goes over the top. pipes are now in the trench so we're just going along filling it in with some small gravel before we have to put our coloured tapes down to say what's in this trench but we can't do that today 
we need to go and buy the tape for that. Yeah, and this will hopefully be the last job of the day. Yeah. Well, I'd only intended to get a small amount of gravel and the guy accidentally put too much in. Then we got to do this job, which we hadn't really planned for today, but it's done. I think he's getting pretty handy with his digger. First trench, no mishaps. That's the end of another long day here. Um, we've got more plan. We've got more done today than we had planned. Um, we managed to finish behind me what we started yesterday. Um, I went and got more gravel so we could finish off the French drainage. All that is levelled and we've continued all the way down behind me. The bank behind, you can see the French drain all enclosed there. And a little bit further behind me, there's Ian. We managed to get another drain dug out. That was a mistake by the quarry. They gave me far too many stones. So um, we decided to go ahead do another trench and put in our water and electricity line. I'm going to call it a night there, I think, today. It's, uh, yeah, lots of groundwork and digging today. But it's turned out really nice. And we shan't be up here too early, too much tomorrow. It's our little son, grandson Tom's second birthday. So I'm going to go say hello to them.